Greetings everyone, and welcome back to, yet again, another installment in the iWish series. The series in which I investigate rather dubious tech products sold on various websites around the web. No, that doesn't make sense. Smalls, I'm an idiot. I stuffed the intro up. Well done, me. A series in which I investigate rather dubious tech products sold on various sites around the web just to see if they're any good. Most of the time they are not, but I like to buy this stuff so you don't have to. And what I'm looking at today is a knockoff. So I don't endorse the sales of any replica products or stuff that has ROMs on them and stuff like that. This is just for entertainment and educational purposes only. I'm sure saying that doesn't matter but I'll just say it anyways and the item that I'm going to be showing you all was found on that live stream that I did a couple of weeks ago just looking on AliExpress for random items and I was actually looking at purchasing this off Timu but it was out of stock so I looked on AliExpress sure enough there it was you folks wanted to see it so here we go we're going to be taking a look at a bootleg Nintendo Switch from AliExpress it looks interesting though but it doesn't do a whole lot massive thank you once again to all the folks displayed on screen for donating towards seeing these random random AliExpress items shown on the channel. You folks are mad lads and especially Brian Martins and Ruffle Daniel for donating exorbitant amounts of money to see this stuff reviewed on the channel. So I hope you're all gonna thoroughly enjoy these reviews with all of the items that I've got to look at. I always appreciate the support from everyone who just joins in the streams and just chats and hangs out with me. It's just really, really awesome. But yeah, thank you all for the donations. You folks are single-handedly funding I wish. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing thing. One more thing before I jump into the listing, there's the usual timestamps in the description as well as the pinned comment and in the video as well called chapters so you can just skip along to wherever. The listing doesn't have much to it so I'll just take a quick look at it, show you the pricing and then we can move on to the unboxing but yeah if you need to use the timestamps to skip through this video, it's going to be fairly basic anyways, then feel free that's absolutely no problems. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 4.3 inch 2.4G wireless 8-bit AV output detachable dual-use handheld TV video game console built in 800 plus classics retro games and currently this is about $37 on AliExpress but total with the shipping tax was $40 so $40 for this game console I'll display a currency conversion chart on screen to give you a rough idea of how much this thing will cost around the world this is just more of a novelty and showcase of a bootleg Nintendo Switch that can't even do 3D accordingly but I chose it in blue red because that's the authentic colorway that's really it we do have the description which is all in caps so it's yelling at me with 8-bit handheld and tv game big 4.3 inch color lcd screen two detachable wireless joysticks 2.4g technology built in 800 plus good games in memory av output earphone jack built-in speaker power supply rechargeable and replaceable bl5c lithium battery of course it uses bl5c wireless joysticks use two aaa batteries console with a stand wireless joysticks lithium battery aaa batteries usb charging cable hand string av cable and manual is all included in this just quickly there are some pictures in the listing which we've got this one portable design take it anywhere play classic games anytime and it shows assassin's creed i'm sure we can all play assassin's creed on this if there's a bootleg of that on there it'd be hilarious two detachable wireless joysticks which it doesn't look like there's anything on the console to tell that they've been docked i think they're just literally detachable wireless controllers the last picture i'm just gonna display on screen detachable wireless joysticks support two players play games with your friends the photoshop job is amazing well done shall we move on we're gonna move on because that's all of the the stuff in the listing that I want to take a look at. Very quick and easy. Let's get into unboxing this thing. Take a look at it. Guys, I got a pretty big garbage bag because there's two items in here. So two of the AliExpress items that we found on stream are shoved into this garbage bag, which I will be reviewing the other one, but let's crack this open and take a quick squeeze at, well, quick squeeze, I mean a uh, 40 minute video on this handheld gaming console. And there it is there the game magic and here is the other item the mctel that's not what the box looked like on the listing oh that's why we all purchased it that's sad okay well that's all that's in the garbage bag well here it is my 40 dollar nintendo switch it's called the game magic and the m is pretty unique actually they just took the switch logo magic exactly there's the controls that in there well it looks like a switch box it's a bit squished up but it's all looking fairly good at the bottom the actual content may possibly vary from photos and specifications on the box okay well in the box console two controllers two controllers lithium battery four triple a batteries one charging cable av cable hand string and a manual on the back meet your different playing designs with variety of magic transformations okie dokie so you can play it like that with 
what game is that? I don't know what that is, but it's cut off. Then you have connect it to the TV and play in absolutely amazing quality. Then you have, that's definitely a Nintendo Switch in these kids' hands and they've just replaced it with this thing. There's that kid again. Two people looking like they're absolutely playing the legit game magic. And then this family that really does look Photoshopped for some particular reason. But anywho, that's all around the box. The box is extremely cheap, of course. Basically what this is, is a Famiclone in a Nintendo Switch shell. Here we go. So we've got an AV cable, which just uses a 2.5 mil jack. And we get only mono audio as well as video. Our hand string, micro USB. We have some AAA batteries in here with the brand June Red, super heavy duty. I bet they are. The BL5C, which um, is clearly legit, as you can see. We have a user manual. Please read through this instruction manual completely before use and keep it well for future assistance whenever required. I probably will need to read this actually to see what I'm doing. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of things there and the stand and stuff. Okay, looking good. Use a screwdriver to open the battery covers of both main console and two joysticks. How to recharge the console, not included. Alrighty, look. It's worn gins. We got worn gins. All right, I think I get a good idea of what's going on. Out you come, buddy. There you go. Opening the back cover, I'll put the battery in. Uh, sure thing. Just put the BL5C right. That feels really janky. That's because it is. So on the back, We've got a single speaker. We do have the wireless controllers just there, which I'll take a look at soon. The little kickstand. There you go. It is a kickstand. Nice. At the top, we've got a volume wheel, a power on and off switch, micro USB, and the 2.5 mil headphone jack. And you can just see the quality of this, how well it's put together. Looks good. Oh, there's the headphone jack there. On the front of the console, it's looking a little something like this. <laughs> Oh dear. The buttons feel extremely mushy, which is always good. And then if I press the buttons on the back, yep, they come out like a switch controller and there's no contacts on them whatsoever. So you're going to be playing your games like this. Listen to it. That doesn't sound good at all. And then if we take the other one off, oh, is that a micro SD card slot? No, that's not. But oh my God, look how cheap that is. Take the film off as well. That sounded like hell. So in order to run this console, you need a charged BL5C battery or plug the micro USB cable in so it recharges the battery while you play. And then you need four AAA batteries to put in the controllers to play it in handheld mode. Once again, it comes back to, can we have a switch? We have a switch at home. Switch at home. I just thought as well, I wonder if there's magnets maybe that tell the console that you've docked to the controllers. Let me test that theory. There is a magnet right there that tells the console. So that's how it works. Magnets. That goes in there. This goes in there. And we're ready to play our bootleg switch. Well, here we go. I want to die. Oh, well, do the controls work? Wow. But that, that, that's it. Well, the controls are absolutely mushy, as I mentioned earlier. Oh, the music's terrible. At least it's loud, though. So let's see Adventure. Okay, so we have 56 in one. Super Mario Brothers, I'm not gonna read all of these. Oh, Mario 16's here. Oh, Crash Bandicoot and Pokemon Red. Oh my God, we have a whole bunch of bootleg games on here. Mario 16 is there again. There's not 800 games, is there? Crash Bandicoot though, oh my God, we have to play that. Yeah, they just repeat. Okay, let's play Super Mario Brothers. Okay, that didn't help. You can't change the aspect ratio either. It's just how it is. Oh my God. I mean, it's smooth, but it's also stupidly slow. That display, wow. That's uh, pretty low resolution. So with an idea of how gameplay is gonna be on this, let me try Super Mario Brothers 3. Okay, that seems to run a bit better. Maybe it's just the ROM that they've put on here. Yeah, this runs half decent. Let's try Mario 16, because I'm, I'm sure Mario 15 hasn't been released. 1993 as well, by the way. Press start to play. Press select for options. Select. There's two player mode. Oh, we got a story. Is that a caveman? Was that a caveman? That's a caveman. Yeah, oh, okay. Do I press start? Oh, well, okay. Player one, nine lives left. 
Wow. Um, I'm Mario that can... What am I throwing? I don't know what I'm throwing, but sure enough, I'm Mario in prehistoric times. That screams. Well, at least the sprite looks good. I don't know what game this is based on. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments. I can't jump on enemies either. Oh, it says bomb, I think. When you throw that thing, it says bomb. <laughs> How I feel when playing this. If you press start and select, it takes you back. Kirby's Adventure. That's a fun game on the NES or NES. Hack by Kronos. Why is it using a hacked ROM? I used to play Kirby's Dream Land on um, Game Boy. It was so fun. This runs reasonably well. I can't wait to see the TV output on this though. Pokemon Red. Oh boy. Oh dear lord. Easy and normal. Yes. Stage one. No storyline? Oh, oak. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Look at the way. <laughs> the way it walks. Once again, not too sure what this is ripping off. Oh. I got a coin though. What the hell is that? All right. I die. There we go. Pokemon Red. Looks like it. Looks good. What's game over screen look like? Did you just fart and die? Probably. That's interesting. Let's try Crash Bandicoot. I've seen this before. I've seen this, yeah. <laughs> Wee. Well, it's Crash Panicoot in the sense that you can jump on boxes, you can spin, you can crouch, you can collect Wumper Fruit. It's laggy. You can jump on enemies. This is the best you'll probably get Crash Panicoot on the NES. Oh, the plants are here too. Okay, so they've got the lizards from Crash 1 and the plants from Crash 1. And the warping as well. And that's it, we're on to the second level already. This one actually seems like they've put effort into it. Rescue cuck. <laughs> okay, basically from here it just starts repeating. So I'll go back to classic. Aladdin, Dr. Mario, Tetris, Galaga, Galaxian, Bomberman, Pac-Man, Spider-Man? Oh, okay, do we have any bootlegs? So it's like a bunch of compilation carts on this motherboard. I can't wait to tear this down, actually. Yep, repeats after about 25 games or so. Doesn't look like there's anything bootleg there. I mean, the whole thing's bootleg, but you know what I mean. Ninja Gaiden, Castlevania, Wrath of the Black. Okay. We also have Super Chinese too, by the way. I'm pretty sure I've played that before. Oh, this one's only 38 and one, but still repeats anyways. Fighting, Street Fighter, Double Dragon, Karate Champ Goonies is in fighting for some reason. Wouldn't it be an adventure? Doesn't matter. No more bootleg games. Puzzle, come on, give us something weird. Alien Asylum, all right. Ghostbusters is here, that's a fun game. I'm obviously not gonna play all of these games because we'd be here forever, but I'm sure you can work out what most of them are. Once again, repeats, then Shooter. Oh, the music is horrific. Mega Man, Contra 12 in one. So is there a number in one on a number in one? Because there's a 24 in one. There is, and the same with 24 in one. Yeah, it's bootlegs with bootlegs with bootlegs. Makes sense. Um, Plants vs. Zombies is on here, which I've shown before, but I'll quickly give it a go to see if it's the same. Yeah, it is. It's the same one. Yep. I have a feeling the emulation's at about, like, 70%. Alien 3's on here. That's cool. Harry Potter. Oh, God. That's... Um, yep, this is Harry Potter, as you can clearly see. Didn't know Harry Potter went to the middle of, um, Saudi Arabia and flying on a broom. And then Parialis came along with his broom and his silk, and he erected a beautiful city, a city of stars. That's horrific. Strategy. Oh, yeah, give me some strategy games. Donkey Kong. Oh, I'm glad that's here. Back to the Future. Wait, what did I select? 
strategy and Back to the Future's in strategy. Okay, I can partially agree with that. After a few games, it just repeats as well. Sports. I'm very well trained in sports. I've got no idea what any of this is. Hyper Olympic, hot blood basketball. And then it just repeats once again. What's hardcore? The Legend of Cage. Mighty Final Fight. Cage again, because there's only 18 in one. They made an NES game based on Dirty Harry? I didn't know that. Air War. Okay, so this is all flying space game stuff, which starts repeating after you get to about game 40. Also, I've just noticed the chickens here. I'm looking at the games list. I didn't even realize these two idiots on the side here. Looking good. Racing. Mario Kart? Sure. Hmm. Do I want faster speed and less weight, or do I want normal speed and more weight? Mario will do. Wow, this is actually a legit bootleg. Did I just say that? Okay. Go for it, buddy. Wow. Look at the speed, 293 kilometers an hour. Is that Yoshi? Who are you? Once again, I'll give them effort. It's Mario Kart, 8-bit edition. Oh, there's an actual corner. Hold on, folks. Hold on. We're going around a corner. I'm getting there. I mean, it is impressive for an 8-bit game, I will say that. When I do the showcase connecting up to a TV, we'll see what it looks like, but I'll give them some praise for that. I'd be here for way too long if I went to every single one of these games, so I'm just trying to get through the initial playthrough as quickly as possible, because this music's really uh, doing my head in. Let's try Angry Bird. Angry Birds. Okay. Rest, zero, three. Sure. Oh, this is that angry bird. You just smack your head into blocks and um, that's how you win. Oh, well, no, because I need to get up to the door that's floating in the sky. Makes sense. Angry Bird 3. Oh, this is the better one. This is the more legit one, see? Select episode. We're getting there. There we go. Yep. Mm-hmm. Got it. Did I do it? Nailed it. I think this is the first one that doesn't repeat, but I have seen all these other games on the GS5, I believe. So, question then. Let me go back to Adventure, open up Crash Bandicoot, and if I take the controllers out... Oh, fuck. That's a nice looking console now. I'll use a bootleg to hold up the bootleg. So, with them disconnected, can I just press start? Yep, I can! Nice! And... Yep, sure enough. It works! Oh! It even has little animations as well. This is probably my favourite game out of all of them. No, so second player doesn't work because obviously it's not a two-player game. But, hey! It does the job! Imagine being on a plane, and seeing someone whip out one of these bad boys. You wanna play? Yeah, okay, let's, let's play. Two player mode. Once I get to the teardown, I'll tear these apart and see how this all interacts with one another. But I wanna turn this thing off because that's slightly doing my head in. Don't worry about this, you've already seen that. Let me connect this to a TV and we'll see what the output looks like. I'd connect it to a CRT, but I'll just connect it to an LCD and test out the AV output of this. So far, this isn't really an interesting review. We all just thought it would be a cool novelty to look at, but I don't wanna spend two hours looking at all of those NES games. I'm just glad that there's actually bootlegs on here. Anyways, let me hook it up and I'll be right back. It is now time to play my bootleg switch on an LCD TV. I actually tried to use a USB capture card. While it did work, the video output was just scanning up and down, so I've just decided to put the camera at the TV. It's going to look terrible, but if you were to purchase one of these and connect it to a TV, well then, this is what it would look like. Well, at least you can see the sprites a little better. Well, at least it's smooth. I'll see if Super Mario Bros. has improved, or if it's going to be still exactly the same. Is it slower, or is it the same? It feels faster, but there is input lag now. The further I sit away from the console, the worse it gets. I'm about a meter and a half away from the console. It doesn't look too bad with only just being AV as well. I would honestly rather just play it on the TV than the LCD display. All right, let's try Crash. Okay, that's still as slow as it was before. Notice the side of the screen as well. <laughs> 
it's just sort of just chugging along, but uh, this is very, very slow. I feel it was faster while playing it on the console and not outputting to a TV. So Super Mario Brothers runs faster, but this runs slower. I'm sure that makes sense. Look at him just bobbing along the Wii. All right, I'll try Mario Kart again. Let's choose Luigi this time, which I realized that the other players on this track were Luigi's. Let's see if they're now Mario. Move, buddy. There you go. Ah, uh, yep. That's Mario. Just wish there was some sound, you know. But ba 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 I'm trying to think of um some of the songs from Super Mario Kart. Oh, Donut Plains was a good one, but I don't remember off the top of my head. If you would like a bootleg Switch and a few bootleg NES games for 40 bucks and you can sit away from the TV and play them with the wireless detachable controllers, you absolutely can if you want to. Actually, how far away can I go back before it doesn't work? Okay, I'm like three meters away from it and the input lag is really, really bad now. There's at least like half a second delay. But I mean, what can I say for this cheapo console? I probably should sit back near the camera, shouldn't I, instead of yelling across the room. I've tested the console out. I've tested the controls out and I get a good idea of what's going on with this cheapo thing. So I think we should tear this down, get a better look at the innards of this thing and see how it all operates and works. All right, you've just seen the demonstration for TV out on this. And like I said, the quality wasn't too bad though. It's just input lag with these controllers, but the novelty's there at least. So I'll give it that, but I really just want to tear it down and see the innards of this thing to see what they've done with this console and to really investigate just how cheap this thing is. The SF2000 costs less do a lot more and is so much better quality wise than this. They just threw some old guts together and called it a day I think. Also if you're wondering about the Joy-Cons, can you put them in the opposite? Can you switch them around? So can you put red on the left and blue on the right? The answer is no you can't. It doesn't fit. Actually, wait a minute. I've just found the switch for the switch. There is a little toggle there. And because this is one player, that's all that's telling it. That's how that works. I've only just realized that now. But you can also see how scratched the plastic is from me taking the Joy-Con out and then putting it back in. This thing is genuine e-waste right here. Let's take one of the controllers apart then. So there's just four screws that hold the controller together. So that's fairly straightforward. With four screws removed, I can just that off. There's the button there with a little spring attached to it. They've printed L on the circuit board so you can't mix them up. And what does the circuit board look like? Also, someone really sloppily done positive and negative just there with like a soldering iron just burning it into the plastic. At least they knew. But taking two screws out, I can pull the circuit board back and there it is. It is the Dr. 8080 2.4 gigahertz and the chip that's on there has been sanded down so I can't see what that is. So unfortunately you can't reverse engineer this. I'm sure no one would want to do that anyways. Standard membrane buttons there which yeah still feel extremely mushy. The buttons themselves look a little something like that. So it looks like they're keyed in there so you wouldn't be able to switch them around I don't think. Oh you know what I've just realized? What the magnet was picking up? the spring there. I'll uh, make sure to tell you all that then. So it is just using that little toggle switch on the side there to detect the controllers, that's it. No sophisticated technology. I may as well take the second controller apart just in case there's anything different in there. And the other controller actually looks slightly different. There's three screws that hold the PCB in. I don't think that looks any different. It's just the same thing, but it was worth checking just in case. I could have also compared this to a real Nintendo Switch, but I'm fairly sure you can tell the differences between the two. All right, with all the screws removed, uh, I think I can just pull this apart then. I'm having a slight issue. I don't know how this comes apart. Never mind, I got it. You just kind of have to struggle with it a little bit. Well, there's our tiny little spurker there. That's a eight ohm, 0.25 watts. And yeah, it is just that switch. We've got a little capacitor there as well. Looking fairly empty inside of it. Okay, with both screws removed, I'll just start lifting out the motherboard. But can I take off the screen? I can take off the screen and we have chips. There's the LCD just there, which we've got 2020 as the manufacturing date on this. That LCD actually looks the same as the X5 or X7 game player that I had a look at a few months ago. Kind of looks the same thing. It's in that same shape. I wonder if it's actually interchangeable. But yeah, it's just sitting there like so. Easy screen replacement. We now have a motherboard. And it is the Dr. 8080. And there's not 
a lot going on here. We do have the epoxy blob that would contain the Famiclone stuff, micro USB, the switch, the volume wheel, headphone jack is on its own little board, but we do have a expansion module just there. I wonder what that is. Yep, that's a 256 megabit module, which is 32 megabytes total storage, which is about right for something like this. That's all the sophisticated technology that is inside of this thing. So I'll put it back together and we will conclude this video, I think, because I'm getting tired. Okay, so it all works. Using it wirelessly like this works completely fine, but now if I push the switch in, it now disables those buttons. So that's how it works. Letting go, go straight back to it. So I'll just chuck them back into place, and there's our bootleg switch that I'm gonna switch off, because we're done with it. You folks donated to see this, and I've showcased it off. I hope that money has gone to good use. So in that case, I have to thank all of these people that donated on my live stream. Thank you so much for putting your money towards e-waste. That is the realization there, isn't it? Being serious though, thank you so much everyone who donated. I really do appreciate it. And I hope I've delivered an entertaining review for you all. But if you've made it to the end of the video, thanks so much for watching through this. I really do appreciate it. But if you had to use the timestamps, that's completely understandable. If you wanted to just go straight to the teardown or see the gameplay. Not a problem at all. That's why they're integrated. Let me know if you've used a Famiclone in the past. I know a lot of people have used Famiclones and I've got quite a lot of them sitting in my garage that I collected when I was younger. I should showcase them off one day because I have some fairly interesting ones. But yeah, feel free to share your stories with using Famiclones. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for another I Wish episode. Taking a look at the $40 Switch bootleg, that's definitely not worth it. I hope you all enjoyed this one. Thank you all so much for watching this one. And stay tuned because I've got more cheapo crap that I've got to look at, which I'm pretty sure that's what 99% of the viewers who watch my channel or into. So until then, please take care, stay safe and be good people. And I'll see you all in the next video, which will be something. We'll work it out. You know, it's just very random until I have to work out something and then put it out and then yada yada. No. All right, enough of me rambling. Take care and I'll see you next time. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.